Hello, homeschoolers. Excited to be here with you tonight. Although I have to say the potentially final game of the Stanley Cup is being played right now, and I'm missing the last two minutes, but I wanted to be on time, and I wanted to make sure that I got to come talk to you. So I'm trusting my husband to watch it and update me on it. Anyway, um, welcome, and thank you for coming to participate in my Using Play to Improve Writing series. Uh, for those watching the replay, Thank you, and I hope that you find this valuable. For those who are watching it live, please feel free to write any questions that you have in there or ideas uh, in the comment section. I would love to have as much participation as you'd like to bring. Um, so, yay, tonight, episode 14. Boy, we're getting it. It's, it's making a haul here. Um, so I have been posting up until now the specifics of what I was doing every night and um, of the or every Thursday um, in this series, and I have a poll out there right now in the group to kind of get some people's feedback of what they'd like, and I hadn't got enough yet, so I went with an impromptu one tonight, and this is in honor of um, the client I'm working with right now, one of my clients. Um, she has been working with me around learning and how do we awaken the learn in her daughter um, with her eight-year-old and she has a four-year-old that she's going to be starting to do homeschooling with soon and so I say to Avery this one's for you okay tonight our theme is Octonauts and for those who don't know about Octonauts it's an animated preschool show and so I am my ideas tonight are really going to focus around working with two to six year olds that are um, at, at a very pre writing stage, which I'm going to cover in a second. So for those who don't know me or don't know me well, I'm Jill Wolf, learning specialist, and I help homeschool parents plan meaningful experiences so they can awaken the learn in learning. We're in the 21st century. Learning is all about do I understand how I learn, who I am as a learner, what helps me learn, because knowledge is at my fingertips, but I need to know how to learn it and what I'm going to do with it. So I am all about learning, and we are focusing in this series on writing, the specific learning of writing. And to improve writing, uh, I think the, the more that we connect it to the individual, and especially through something like play, the better chance we have of really getting them to engage and try. It's something that is a pretty tough skill. I would say that most people I've met have said, oh, I'm not a great writer, or, you know, whether they have to write for their website or they write for um, letters or screenplays or whatever. Writing is always um, a bit laborious. And so we want to make it fun as they're learning how to do that. And that's why this whole series is about using play to do that. And tonight we're focusing on using Octonauts to improve writing. Now you say, but Jill, these are two to six year olds, they're not writing yet. How do I use Octonauts to improve writing? And I'd say to all the Averys out there that your little two to six year olds have all sorts of ideas about Octonauts. They have stories that they act out, they have information they've learned from an episode they want to ask questions about and are more curious about. They have the little um, figurines that they play. Um, they may even act out in the house um, this. And they've got all sorts of things to say about the Octonauts. And saying or speaking, talking is the first step to good writing. I need to be able to talk about my ideas. I need to be able to um, express them in words talking first before I can ever express them on paper. So as I've said before, for me, for my um, beliefs and what I've shared, that writing is less about the words on a page and more about the big picture of I'm communicating what I understand um, to out to an audience. And guess what? Little four-year-olds can talk up a storm. And so they have something to say. So tonight I want to... Um, so I'm dedicating this episode to Avery, and um, I know she's going to be beginning doing some writing with her mom, and so I wanted some ideas for them around octonauts. So let me first start, talk with, um, share with you about how to work with pre-writers. And if I look down, it's because I got some notes, so I want to make sure I get everything tonight. But how to work with pre-writers, and I call them pre-writers because they are just beginning to... Um, well, they've been expressing ideas ever since they could start verbally talking. They began communicating before words with pointing. Now it's words, and now it's words in sentences. Um, they're not 
writing yet. They don't do the physical act of writing words and sentences. They may be getting to learn recognition of letters, recognition of sight words. They certainly have mom reading them stories um, and dad reading them stories, but they aren't necessarily writing out their own. But just because they're not physically writing it doesn't mean they aren't writing it. Imaginative play is all about writing, right? A story, whether I'm acting out one I just saw up there or whether I'm making up a new one. So first of all, pre-writers talking, best pre-writing activity you could ever have them do. So you're in a good place. Two, um, you can talk through the writing, and we'll get into the different kinds later, but let's say you're working with a story, and your child has the different characters are gonna do this and that and the other, and so they're telling you the story. Mom is your scribe. Mom write it out. Um, now, at this age, I wouldn't have them recopy it. I think they're still too little, even if they're six, or seven, it's very laborious to copy uh, like eight pages of even two or three lines. So at this stage, I would say either mom's writing is what goes in the story, um, and I can illustrate dark pictures, or if you don't like mom's writing, <laughs> uh, if you have a mom who's a doctor and doesn't write so neat, or you just, the, the little one says, I want something different, type it, it's not gonna be that many sentences, and let them choose the font, okay? Print it, and you cut it out, and that's what you glue into your book. Um, but this way they start to see the words they just said as their story or whatever kind of writing you're doing, they're getting to see what that looks like. They can't read it yet, but they know this represents what I just said, and they can be very proud of that. Um, third, most two to six-year-olds play in story form story imagination and so story imagination has the same things that any story structure has you have characters you have plot you have setting right with some theme or something underlying what's happening there and so when they play um they may or may not be specific to any show or book but two to six year olds are playing out some story or something that's happening and so you have at its basis some conversation about the characters or so you just had peso like so an octant peso the penguin you just had peso the penguin um swim over and help that little crab does peso the penguin always do that yes because that's peso the penguin that's his character so you can just talk about characters and and you can talk about plot lines and what happens in setting and a little bit more generally if you're like talking about two or three different types of shows but Imagine it to play is because it's story, it has these things. All right, so let's talk Octonauts. First of all, it's an episodic show or set of books, and they have a formula, like any episodic show. And so um, I imagine as a parent, you've watched plenty of episodes with your child, and you could map out the formula. And at first, this might be just a discussion that you guys have, like, what seems to always happen first in these episodes? And then what happens? And then now, if I'm looking for specific, so I'm watching this episode here, the specific things that happen, but maybe if I watch four or five and I look for the formula together, um, if they're too young, then you yourself figure it out so that when you go to act out stories or things like that, your prompt, prompting of them can be this formula. Um, they give a ton of info on marine life. Octonauts, for those who don't know, are eight underwater astronauts, essentially, that go around and help marine life with marine problems. And um, so they are constantly giving some marine life um, information, kind of scientific, um, explanatory, something. So here's some examples. Uh, I just watched an episode today, and they were had these whales that were coming along and going to hit the octa the octopod, which is where they do all their work underwater. And um, it turns out that their sonar was being thrown off because of the noises make it being made in the octopod by all the octonauts. And so they talked about what sonar was. There you go. Fits in the story, but I'm, I'm, they're doing a little education to the kids about um, sonar. Um, they talked about blue whales being the largest um, animal on the planet and these big huge things blah, blah 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 but they've told you now that blue whales are the largest um one of the little characters is a medic and whenever he goes around he's say saying medics help all creatures who are hurt and sick and so they're helping you understand that this is what a medic does what a medic is um 
they talk about scientific concepts like symbiosis and camouflage and um, hibernate. Well, I don't think they do hibernation because it's underwater, but um, they have all sorts of scientific concepts about marine life that they're sharing. But all this info is going on um, in the story. They share it and they weave it in. Then they also have some things about teamwork because the octonauts work as a team. Okay, you heard me pause because I heard my toddler out there and dad is supposed to be watching him and I just want to make sure he's okay. I think they're, they're good. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so octonauts have these different things. You've got a formula for each show. Uh, the formula for this one really looks like you got a problem. And then as they're attempting to solve it, somebody on the team gets caught or hurt or has a second problem. Then they have to save this guy and then they go solve the problem. And it, that's kind of how it flows. Um, if you watched more episodes, you'd have a, a better formula. But you got the formula of, of the episode. They give Marine Info Life and they talk about teamwork all the time. So you've got those three huge things going on in every episode, which gives you a lot of things you could do. So kinds of writing. Let's dive in. Okay. Um, I have eight kinds of writing to share with you on Octonaut. So I'm going to start with story mapping. Now, story mapping, huge, huge, and something so simple in a preschool show. And your child is going to find the different parts of the story, especially if, as you watch an episode, you pull out those, um, because then you can make sure that those are happening in play, or you can even pull it out of their play. But um, story mapping, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? Very simple. Um, as they get older, you introduce the plot diagram, um, and so they see, you know, how that, but at this stage, there's just a beginning, middle, end. So what happens at the beginning? Well, what happens in the middle? Well, what happens at the end? And I can just map this out. And you can draw just a big, three big circles and write that. Um, but as they're telling you about what's happening in the story, in the beginning, the middle, and the end, you write it in and let them begin to see this idea flow of a story. Um, even in their play. So, hey, you guys, I saw you just playing this, you know, story out. Come here a second. So what happened at the beginning? And what happened here? Because I heard the end. And maybe when you say, I heard the end, and you write in the end, I'm curious what happened at the beginning and in the middle. So you're showing them that these three elements are always going to be, these, these three parts are always going to be part of a story. And it's even in their play. So you pull these out, and they begin to see some story structure. And you're writing out then their beginning, middle, end. Um, OK, two is story writing. I do this one a lot. I have this in every one of my play. There's ways to tell stories. And that's because a lot of play is, is story driven. Um, but I have some specifics about what we're going to do with this story writing. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start. I'm looking at my notes here. Start with play. Okay, so you start with play. Okay, kind of let them play. And throw in a little bit about, but okay, remember the octonauts, so they're underwater. So how would that change what you're doing? Okay, well, okay, so, but you see them doing stuff underwater, so that's not, you say, you know, but they work as a team. So how would that change? Or what's so-and-so doing? You know, it, 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 even if you got siblings playing or a single person playing, um, that's one character. Are they playing out all the characters um, with the little figurines? Or are they acting it out themselves? And if they're acting themselves, they're probably just one of the characters. But if they're using the figurines, they're probably trying to include them all, um, or at least three or four of them. So what is so-and-so doing? What is so-and-so doing? So you start, okay, you start with the play, and make sure to include teamwork. And from there, I'm going to do an arrow. We talk about the problem. Well, they have three main types of problems in Octonauts, from what I could see. They have marine problems, which is um, underwater. So something to do with the current or um, a cliff or the coral, although coral would be considered life, um, but something with the environment there, um, which is essentially your setting, but some, some problem there. Or they have marine life problems. Uh, like one I just saw, the little octopus had, um, he has all these uh, really sharp spikes 
underneath on the underside of an octopus. And one of them had ingrown, like an ingrown nail. They had it ingrown. He was in all this pain and it was a big problem that they were trying to solve. So you have marine life problems. And then you have interactions with human problems. Now the characters themselves aren't humans, but they're representative of human interactions with them. And so um, how is it that um, either the characters themselves as humans or humans out here all around have interacted with the marine life. So how have the human interactions caused some problems? You've got those three minds. So marine, which is more the environment, marine life, which are the different animals, and the interactions with humans or characters. Um, so they identify the problem. So if you're starting with play, what's the problem that they're doing? Now, in some ways, you don't necessarily want to interrupt them playing, but if you catch them towards the end, you can ask them these questions. Um, also, though, if I'm going to go right, one of the stories I'm playing out, then I have to identify what this is because this needs to be my story. Um, so then we're going to do, uh, what do I have here? Make notes or chart the storyline. Which is really your beginning, middle, end, right? Beginning kind of, we discover what the problem is. Middle, we're trying to solve it. And the end, we actually fix it and handle everything in between. So you're going to actually do just a little chart of this. And it can just be three big circles. Um, and then we're going to actually write the story. Now, again, I come back to, these are pre-writers. So what does it mean, write? It means they talk it out or tell it. And you scribe it, OK? Um, then we have illustration. This is a fun part for this age because they're really into art. Um, they may not be great at it, but they're really into art. Okay, so let me give you some ideas about how they illustrate the story. If they like to just hand draw, great. Have them draw the picture. And I wanted to show you, where is it? Here we go. So at Target, you know how Target has the like dollar bins? Now they have the dollar and three dollar and five dollar. So I found this set in the three dollars and it's all of these. It's like one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight blank little storybooks. And they're just paper stapled together with a front cover that's a little harder so you could have a title or you could glue a picture on there. And I think it's got about like eight to ten pages, not a ton. Just perfect for a preschooler who wants to write a story, okay? So you have, they've written it, you write it out, um, write it on a separate sheet, and then either cut and paste in here, or you rewrite in here, or type and print it. And so then they put the words at the bottom, and then they get to put a picture and illustrate, just like the picture books that you read them, okay? Um, but illustration can be tough. So they can either hand draw it if they're feeling pretty confident or they really love to draw, let them draw it. Um, but here's some other ideas. You can Google Octonaut images, and up comes all sorts of choice. So put in Octonauts, and then under Google, go to images, and all these things will come up. Okay? All of them you can screenshot or capture and print. You're not selling it, so don't worry about it. You can pull them off and cut and paste and print. Or you can do a black and white one. Oops, upside down. So I just printed a black and white one. And this is them in their little... I don't know what they call it. And they go around and um, they leave the big octopod and they take their little submarine out and they go around in it. Okay. So maybe she wants to use, he or she wants to use this. So you print this off and you let them cut it out, paste it on that and color it or color it and cut and paste whatever order. And now they've got an illustration that looks a little bit more like the real characters. Okay. And so for these, you just Google Octonaut black and white and then go to images and up come all these black and white ones like this that they can color, okay? Um, they're also, if they wanna learn to draw these, there are some great YouTube videos. Now, I'd always screen YouTube videos first, but I found a whole bunch for Peso the Penguin and all these different people, they're different lengths that are showing you how to draw a Peso. And so you could just follow along and learn how to draw him yourself. Still not gonna look as great, but you get to be, um, learning to draw at the same time. So it really depends on the level of artistic ability, confidence, and interest of your child, but they get to illustrate the story, okay? So then they have their own book that they've made. Now, if you don't have these, then you just get um, either eight and a half by 11 and fold it in half, or a little bit longer piece of paper, whatever, staple them down the middle, fold it, you got yourself a book, put construction paper on the outside. So if you just have some paper materials at home, you can create your own. Um, but then they have their own story and they could create their library of Octonaut stories. Um, and you know what? It's okay if it's the exact same story that was on the screen. 
but they're retelling it. They, they're going to have very different dialogue and, you know, story points. That's great. They're just starting to get a feel for writing their own story. So this is kind of the flow for story writing. Okay. Number three is pre-writing writing. They might go, well, what do you mean by pre-writing writing? All of us, before we write anything, go through some pre-writing exercises and thinking. How long we spend on those is usually a function of what are the stakes on what I'm writing and um, what, have I, what, what tools and training do I have to know how to do this very well. Um, there's lots of different things. One of the big ones you can do is a character chart, okay? And a character chart can simply be a big piece of paper like this or half the size, whatever, and you just create a chart. It's like a data table. So they're organizing the ideas differently. But what they're learning in the process is that you can organize ideas differently and track ideas differently. And so for this, they're going to take and just have the characters. And in Octonauts, there's eight main characters. And you could have their name, the animal they are, what kind of actions are typical for that um, character. Um, I have attitude and language, like is there something that they always say? I know little Peso the Penguin always says, his little say saying is, I'm a medic and I help, what was it? I'm a medic and I help all creatures who are hurt and sick. Whenever he's out, he says that. And so um, that's a phrase you could write in. So that's what Peso the Penguin is about. And then there's a captain and there's a guy who looks like a pirate and, you know, and so you could, what makes them unique? What kinds of things do they bring to the team? Whatever columns you want, but it's beginning to do, essentially it's the pre-writing for character analysis. They're just doing it of the characters there and you're just making a simple little chart. Now again, you're writing in the words, but they're pulling from what they've seen or their play and all of that still is thinking about the characters, right? And the unique role they play in the story. Um, Another thing you can do is brainstorm story ideas. I actually have a whole notebook for myself of story ideas. And whenever I'm out and about doing whatever, a story idea comes up, I write it down, I come back, I put it in that notebook. So I have all of my brainstormed story ideas there. And in this case, you could brainstorm problems. You could brainstorm um, uh Different, uh, you know, anything that could come from a marine story. Maybe you guys are watching something on TV and you hear about a trash pile or you hear about a turtle that this or an oil spill or blah, 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 blah all of these different ones. Oh, I could do a story about that. So brainstorm, you come back to this and you just keep a chart of them. That's some pre-writing. Um, you could list your favorite stories from the books and the movies. Oh, let me tip this down so you can see that. Not movies, the TV shows. So which ones do you guys like to play out? Why, why are those your favorite? Let's make a list of those because elements of that could be what we put in our store if we do some writing. But even if you don't, it's pre-writing. It's kind of collecting ideas. Um, I have themes on here. I know that the true meaning and depth of theme is very difficult for a two to six year old, but a lot of these shows have something very simple like um, underlying that we want to help marine life. We want to help solve problems in the marine world. Like it's, it all comes back to, you know, octonauts themselves have this one big theme. Um, so if that's, or is that, so, but you could look at and see, are there other themes that emerge from this? Like what, why do you think they do that? Or what, um, like, why is it you feel touched by this story? Now, those are things they're going to have a harder time explaining, but you're introducing them to the idea of inferring a theme from a story. Um, and you're just kind of brainstorming some of those, like, how could we bring this to a story we want to write? Okay, pre-writing stuff. Okay, four, where's my blue pen? Brainstorm or research um, problems. Okay, so I'm going to put research problems up here. Okay, um, <clears throat> how is this different from the next one? Hold on. Oh, um, 
This is from episodes that they see and books they read and play that they're doing is to break to, to, um, Research, look up the problems and solutions. You're more doing, it's more, actually, let me change this. It's more brainstorm than it is research. We're not looking up stuff right now. We're just brainstorming. And uh, it's kind of like keeping a running list of this was the problem they had in this episode, and this is the problem, this, and this is the problem that we had in our play, um, so that you have um, all these problems together. It Actually, it could be some of your pre-writing, um, but it's more focused on the problems versus the wider range of story ideas. Um, and, it, and it can be from the stories that you've read. All right, five, this one is actually really more about research. Because this is going past, I always say research is going past the ex play experience, the interest experience, the view experience to learn more about something. And so from this, we could research um, a problem that they read in the book or see there to learn more about it. So maybe they're trying to think of the one. So the ones I watched today, they had these blue whales and sonar and it being interrupted by loud noises that were underwater. And so your little one might say, wow, I wonder if all animals or all marine life animals are really disturbed by loud sounds. And are there places in the ocean where there's such loud sounds that it throws animals off? Now, they may or may not come up with that, but I'm telling you, some of the things these four-year-olds come up with is pretty, like, whoa, like, that's pretty deep. That's pretty incredible. So um, one of the things you're going to research, then, is any problems or things they're curious about. Okay, problems they're curious about that they read or see. Um, the marine animals themselves. Okay. Okay. Um, there are a ton of kid shows out there, and each one is a different setting. That environment is part of what draws some kids to these shows. And so if it's the marine life and underwater, then something's fascinating about underwater to this little boy or girl that you've got there. Um, my sister was a biology major in college, but she was fascinated by marine biology by marine mammals and so she studied dolphins and she went to a dolphin lab and she loves to read about whales and she goes whale watch and she just it's that's what's fascinated her um so your child might be fascinated just by the marine animals themselves the ones that are the characters like the little polar bear or the penguin or the animals that they're rescuing and they're saving and they're helping so do some research on those well what is research to a two to six year old they can't read so that's where you go, okay, so we're going to look up, maybe we'll see if we can find some books on certain animals. So let me show you a couple. I should have pulled this out before, but it just is coming to me. Hold on one second. I'm coming to my little library over here. Um, okay, so here's a book. It's called The Encyclopedia of Sharks. Now, this might be a little scary <laughs> for a two to four year old, but... Uh, two to six year old, but the pages, when you look at them, they don't have them like big mouths open trying to eat them. They, this is really laid out for a kid. Here's a leopard shark. They're night hunters. And then it shows them a map and where they are in the world. This is an appropriate research space. Now they still can't read the words on the page, but this is where you read and you guys talk together and they might flip through these and say, Ooh, I like the look of that shark, the hammerhead shark. So then you read and you talk about hammerhead shark, like where are they in the world, their appearance, files, scene, all sorts of different things, some cool pictures of these. Um, you can find these kinds of books through Amazon, through your library, um, but that's what research looks like at this age. You find kid-level appropriate um, different kinds of encyclopedia of kind of books. And um, if you come up with some great ones and you want to share them with us, that'd be great because I would love to have, um, ooh, I didn't hit end, did I? Nope. Okay. Because I, I would love to have some resources here for you. But um, maybe it's the shrimp and lobsters and it's the little crawlers along the ground. I'm sure there's an encyclopedia of all of those. So that's where you begin to do research of the animals. Again, you are very involved with helping them learn more about these things. And they'll pick up on the little 
like, oh, that's fascinating. That just kind of feeds uh, a, a bit of fascination about knowledge. Um, and, you know, what's at our fingertips and what can we find? You certainly can start with Google and Google these things. Most of the resources you're going to find straight on Google are much higher level, not as not designed for younger kids. Um, so the um, there's not going to be better picture. Like it just overall, you need something that's written for kids. But um, that's how you dig into research on those. You can research um, into science concepts that they share in the story so symbiosis was this one and the way they described it was that one animal offers something to the other animal and that offers something back and so they both help each other live and then they had this little example in there so maybe that's fascinating to your child this kind of research writing is saying what are you curious about from this show and let's take it a step further and dig into it okay um two other things the octonaut specialties you have a medic, you have a captain. Those are things you could dig into and do some more research on. And locations. So there's some episodes where they're in the Amazon, some episodes where they're in the, um, is it the Marionic Trench? I don't know if that's the right name, but the deep, deep trench on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There's all sorts of different settings they have that are underwater locations. So you could research those. So depending on what from these episodes you're hearing your child play out, depending on when you ask them when you what's your favorite episode why do you like that one what's fascinating about that and you're curious you can begin to do this now how you record this idea can begin to be your their little journal and it could be that okay we're just gonna do a page on sharks maybe we make even a poster out of it and we cut out the pictures and I'll write these words or we'll and we'll print them and you can make a big collage about sharks or a big collage about crustaceans Okay, so they're doing research and finding a way to represent the ideas and the information they learned. Okay, five. Number six, I always have some comparative writing, right? I feel very strongly that the more we do this earlier, even if it's just question and discussion, uh, the more we're training them to think much more deeply about ideas and information. Um, they can compare their character chart. So compare Captain, I don't remember his name, and Peso, the penguin. Compare these two. How are they similar? How are they different? Now, at first, it might be very superficial, right? Like, well, he's a penguin and he's a bear. Okay. Well, what else? Uh, well, okay, this one can swim and this one helps people that are sick. Okay. What else? That's a simple comparison. You can compare um, locations. So this one's in the Amazon and this one's here. What looks different about the environment? How do they make it look colder? They're in the cold polar bear region. You know, this one is in the Amazon, it's hot, it's warm. How do they make it look different? So you can compare locations, you can compare the animals, you can compare the problems. Now this is getting a little more sophisticated, but um, how are these problems similar or different? Okay, um, seven, octopod care. Now the octopod, The octopod is their big, huge underwater laboratory and um, living space. If you saw the abyss, they had one of those underneath. It wasn't called an octopod, but it, this big area, sphere. There's been lots of movies where it's deep in the ocean and they have this big um, living space for humans that has air and technology and all this stuff in it. Okay, so octobud care. So maybe you talk about, well, what do you think it would take to maintain and clean that thing? Like, we do chores to keep our house clean. What can we do, what do you have to do to care for an octopod? Um, there's a couple episodes where you see them cleaning or you're turning stuff or emptying things. Well, how do you clean out the water? How would you take care of food? And so that could be like just chores. Um, you can make a list of those. Um, describe how things work underwater. How does the octopod work? Um, and the final thing I have, I'm running out of space, so I'll just say it, is to um, the octopod, or actually for any of the octonauts, their tools, gear, equipment. They got some really fascinating little things. They have a big radar, and it shows the octopod as a big yellow or a big orange kind of dot. And then in the episode with the whales, it showed just two. Um, like fuzzy white dots that were starting to move closer, okay? And you you go to that and you go, well, what is that? Well, let's make a radar. So if you're going to play, whether doing it little or big, let's make a radar. Let's make it. Well, what does that radar tell us? You're really getting into how do they 
interpret information that's not said or read. This is kind of the beginning of being able to read what we call text features, which are illustrations, visualizations. But in this case, it's a piece of um, technological equipment, right? What is it telling us? What data is on there? If they use it in multiple episodes, how are they representing things on there? Um, or they wear these little like astronaut, hence octonaut, astronaut like the round head gear things that are clear in the front so that they have air. Well, though they do use those in deep, deep, deep sea divers to keep the pressurized. Um, if you're not diving too deep, you can just go down with just so you have oxygen and breathe and goggles. But this is around their head to protect from the pressure, heavy pressure that's down there. So you could say, well, why do they wear those? Or I notice he's carrying this. Or they wear these headsets. Well, what are the um, what kind of gear is that? Why would you need that? Um, so it could bring an element to their play. Like, oh, if you're gonna if you're gonna act like Pace of the Penguin, we gotta get you this. We got let's make you a helmet. Be some creative with um, making some of the gear and what it looks like. But talking about it and maybe even start a chart of it. Again, I come back to charts. Data tables, charts are a great way to organize information. And so, if octonauts are what we're playing with a lot of the time for large periods of time, then we really want to be able to begin to do some writing with it, dig into it. Charts of our characters, charts of the gear, charts of the problems, lists of these things, so that we can maybe write a story a week and we come back to this. And this is the beginning of some serious writing that you're going to do with them um, or research that you're going to do with them. Maybe in doing your research, you come up with a new problem that you want to write a story about or you learn more about a particular marine animal and you realize, ah, that's a problem they have. Let's make that the problem. Let's make this marine animal the one we're going to save. Here's our story. So all of these things can kind of work together. But there's a lot of possibility with this. And I have to say, this is, this is just one show. You could take any show and apply these same ideas of story mapping, story writing, pre-writing, brainstorming problems, research. Um, comparative and care of and, and description of whatever gear or whatever's involved in that particular um, world that it's taking place. Um, this was a really fun one for me to do around Octonauts. I didn't know anything about this show um, before, so thank you, Avery, for introducing me to this. And um, I hope that this has been something that gives you some ideas of how you can do some writing work with two to six year olds that's not heavy handed it's not we have to have a paragraph um i've been reading a lot of facebook posts um of really nervous homeschool parents saying well when are they supposed to have a sentence and a paragraph and should i have them already know be writing sentences at four and five and i say hey you know what again i come back to the development of your child is going to be unique so look where they're at look where they're playing Bring those together. Do what feels natural, a little challenging and rigorous, but you don't have to have them writing full-length stories. They don't have to be even writing their own letters yet to be story writing. Um, I'm going to share one quick story about my nephew, and then I'm going to close. Um, when he was about three or four years old, he loved dinosaurs. And so I went over to his house, and we, made a, we had invented a dinosaur called the Kylosaurus. Actually, his mom and him did. And so I said, well, let's take the Kylosaurus and write some stories about the Kylosaurus. Um, what kind of dinosaur is he? Well, he'd already thought about some of these things. So we were essentially creating a character for him to write a story about and to talk about and think about. And he had a little journal that he kept his notes in. Now, he couldn't write, so the journal was just scribbles. And he would tell me information about the Kylosaurus, and sometimes he'd say, oh, that's not right. It's this. And I'd say, we'll fix it. And I had him a pencil. And all I did is cross off the scribble and put another scribble above. He's getting that information and ideas and stories and all of this are recorded here. And this is what writing is. But it comes from talking about it and having these ideas. He was using the word habitat and environment at three and four years old. Now, unfortunately, our system sets up that when they enter then kindergarten first, all of this creativity and ideas and writing and excitement about writing things that they love about and talking about this research is halted so they can learn to mechanically write. And I want to encourage you, don't let that stop this. Because what they come up with is brilliant. 
And they have such momentum with their curiosity with this. So don't let the fact that they can't write physically, mechanically, write out stories keep you from doing writing with your kids at two, three, four, five, six. Let them see their stories come to life because you write the words that they're saying. Let them color and draw their own pieces and feel so proud of this book and want to show all their friends because the words at the bottom are what they spoke. It's empowering and exciting. And we want our kids to love writing because it's hard. And at some point, we're going to want them to enjoy it enough that it will push them through obstacles and difficulties. Um, so enjoy your two to six-year-olds. Enjoy Octonauts. Enjoy your other TV shows. Enjoy some writing. Please come share your ideas in here. Um, I'm excited to, to answer questions and, and see what comes from this. So um, for those who are not a part of the homeschooling hub, I'm going to have the um, connection in here. It's a free Facebook group that I run where we learn about learning together. Um, and I would love to have you join us and share some of your ideas in there. I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your Thursday night or Friday and weekend if you're watching it later in the replay. Okay? Remember, let's awaken those learners and have a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic weekend. Okay? Bye.